Hello, and thank you for watching this January 18th weather update brought to you by Agrible, the makers of Morning Farm Report. My name is Eric Snodgrass, and I'm a senior atmospheric scientist and co-founder of Agrible. Let's begin first with the deadly overnight tornadoes on Sunday. This map shows the storm reports from Sunday. So far, four tornadoes have been reported. The pictures on the bottom show some of the damage from these storms. This radar image shows the intense storms around 3.45 a.m. on the west coast of Florida. It's hard to tell where you are in this image because of the widespread thunderstorms. We were looking at a region just a few miles southeast of Tampa. This part of the thunderstorm complex was producing a tornado. At this moment, the tornadic cell is moving into Manatee County and producing winds near 130 miles per hour. Radar meteorologists rely on radar to detect tornadoes, like this one, at night. We use radar radio velocity images, like the one that you see here, to detect rotation inside of storms. Green colors indicate precipitation that is being blown toward the radar, which is in this black circle. Red indicates winds that are moving away from the radar. The tornadic rotation is here. This image was crucial in issuing the warning, but tragically, at least two have died and many others were injured from this tornado. Strong El Nino events have a high correlation with severe weather events in the south during winter. The upper map shows how December through February severe weather risk is elevated during an El Nino. The current El Nino is one of the strongest on record and is forecast to last through spring. For our viewers in the south, please be weather aware as this winter continues. Let's turn our attention to the weather from last week. Here is the total accumulated precipitation from last week. While some light snow and rain did spread across parts of the Corn Belt, most of the action was along the east coast from New Orleans to Maine. Most of this precipitation fell as rain, except for a few regions in the far northern parts of the east coast. There were pretty impressive lake effect snow squalls too, which we covered in last week's video. The rain and snow out west is working hard to reduce the drought. The Pacific Northwest is faring much better than California, since the drought in California was significantly worse. Here is the most recent U.S. drought monitor, and we can see a lot of improvement, especially in Washington. While the rain and snow are helping in California, it is going to take a lot more to make a bigger dent in this historic drought. The really good news for the next growing season is that the mountain snowpack is really healthy. Most stations out west are reporting over 100% of average snow water content for this time of year. Well, if you're watching this on Monday morning in the Great Plains and Midwest, you are well aware of the Arctic air mass that has invaded the central United States. This map shows Monday morning temperatures. So where are we going from here this week? Mid-January has brought two big shots of cold air reminding us that it is winter despite December's warmth. Let's start out with precipitation. The large low pressure system that brought snow to the northeast on Sunday moves out and higher air pressure builds in. Tuesday night into Wednesday morning, a quick moving low passes over the central United States, bringing with it a chance of snow for parts of the Corn Belt in Illinois, Indiana, and Ohio, with rain south of these states. This won't be a big snowmaker, but this map shows a couple of inches are possible through the Midwest. We can also see the much heavier snows in the western mountains as rounds of rain and snow continually move on shore. Where things get really interesting is Thursday night into Friday, a second low pressure system is forecast to move through Tennessee toward the mid-Atlantic. The forecast models have had a tough time with the position of this system, but the potential exists for this system to produce some bigger snowfall totals from Tennessee through Kentucky, southern Indiana and Ohio, and several states in the mid-Atlantic. Again, there is still some uncertainty in this forecast, and we will be watching it closely to see how this snow swath evolves over the next couple of days. Temperatures are another story. After two weeks of Arctic air, there is a shift in the large-scale weather patterns. In this animation, we are watching the temperature anomalies, which are differences from normal for the next 10 days. Temperatures in the central United States moderate by midweek, but another shot of cold air pushes through toward the end of the week. After this, Arctic air tends to stay out of the United States, and there is a return to near-normal winter temperatures. Here is the 6 to 10 day forecast for temperatures, which shows the lack of really cold air in the United States again. The top figure shows the phase of the Arctic Oscillation. When the Arctic Oscillation is negative, like it has been for the last two weeks, the United States is typically colder than average. We can see in the forecast of the Arctic Oscillation that it is going to return to a neutral value over the next two weeks, hence the moderation in our temperatures. 
Well, let's check in on Brazil as we finish this video. We have been talking about the dryness in northern parts of Mato Grosso and how rains have picked up there in the last 15 days. The issue now is that additional rain, like that which is forecast over the next two weeks, could hamper the efforts as harvest begins. The places you see getting rain on these two maps were quite dry for most of the growing season. This will have an impact on the safrina corn as well. Well, as always, we at Agrible will bring you the latest and best weather forecast information through our morning farm report so that you can efficiently plan your operations. We thank you for your attention and hope you look forward to our next weather video update. Thank you.